There are some common mistakes that I see time and time again when working with runners and triathletes who are going long. These mistakes have the potential to completely ruin training sessions and races, and it's not very nice. Not very nice is quite an understatement because I mean absolutely awful. And we're talking all of the way from feeling completely wiped out and crouching behind a bush to having to let everything go at both ends. Thankfully, there's a way to make that much better. And in this video, I'm going to show you how so that by the end of it, you'll know what mistakes you might be making and how to fix them. You might find some of these quite surprising and how such simple changes can make such a big difference. And if you're new here, then hey, my name's James and I'm a registered sport nutritionist. I work with amateur and professional endurance athletes to help them train and race better, improve their recovery, and do all of this in a healthy fashion. Now, I love this topic because it has the potential to completely transform your long running. I've worked with clients who have had awful gastro symptoms when trying to increase their running distance, and others who have hit the proverbial brick wall and feel like they can't go another step. But by tweaking their nutrition, they felt amazing, ran for longer and faster than ever before. So let's help you. The place we need to start is energy. No, I'm not talking about spiritual energy or anything like that. I'm talking about the energy that you need to power you through your run. When you run, you have two major sources of fuel for energy, fats and carbohydrates. Almost regardless of what intensity you're running at, you'll use a combination of the two for energy, but the larger portion will be carbohydrates. The average person has over 50,000 calories worth of energy stored as fat, which is essentially unlimited because you're not going to be able to use up all of that store of energy before you have to collapse. However, the average person only has about two and a half thousand calories worth of energy stored as carbohydrates, as something called glycogen. And that's only if you're fully stocked up to start with after following a carbohydrate loading protocol. In context, this is about 90 minutes worth of top end effort or perhaps a couple of hours worth of slower running if you had carb loaded to the max. Now, if you run out of carbohydrates, you'll bonk or hit the wall. What this means is that your stored carbohydrates get to such a low level that you can't maintain the same pace or power, and you'll have to slow down and you will feel dreadful. So in terms of what your nutrition focus should be during your running, hopefully it's clear that if we're purely talking numbers and what stores you have available, or what might run out, your focus should be on carbohydrates. But the other thing to say to round this section out is that for the vast majority of runners, carbohydrates are the optimal fuel source for performance. In order to run as well as you can, you need carbohydrates. So please don't go low carb or follow a ketogenic diet unless you have a specific reason to do that and have worked with a registered professional. And yes, this does even apply if you're doing ultra length running. Even when you're running at a slow, steady pace, you're going to be using a significant amount of your body's glycogen stores or carbohydrates. So you need to keep these up. I'm going to give you some energy calculations later on in the video and link to some practical examples. But first, let's start at the place that lots of runners get wrong. And that's what you eat before your long run. Your breakfast will have a significant impact on how well your long run goes, how energized you feel, and how well you recover afterwards. If you're going for a long run, then I would always suggest that you eat something beforehand. Going long is demanding, and starting in a fasted state is only going to make it harder. My normal advice is to have at least 30 grams of carbs before you run, and as long as you can tolerate it, more is going to be better. The more time you have before your run, the more substantial your breakfast or meal should be. And the closer to your run, the lighter it should be. I've put up the carbohydrate amounts in some common foods for you, so you get an idea of how this looks in practical terms. You can experiment with your food, and there is honestly no perfect breakfast. As long as it contains that amount of carbohydrates and you tolerate it well, then great. If you're prone to tummy upset with running, then I'd suggest reducing the amount of fiber, protein, and fat in your pre-run meal. These nutrients take longer to digest, so they're more likely to still be in your gut when you're running and cause those nasty, unpleasant tummy symptoms. For some clarity here too, it's absolutely fine to have gels before running. Gels are just easy to absorb forms of carbohydrates, and they're gonna be used by your body immediately for energy. 
Plenty of runners I've worked with have done this before their long runs to minimize time delays. So for example, if they want to get out for an early morning run and to reduce the risk of GI upset because they don't tolerate solid food particularly well. I'd normally suggest having 500 milliliters of water with your breakfast if you have a decent amount of time before you run. If you're pretty much just getting up and heading straight out of the door, then a swig or two of water should be fine as long as you've got fluid with you that you can have during your run. We'll talk about hydration during the run later in the video, but for now, let's go through what to eat during your long run. Now, one of the big mistakes that I see with runners is that they wait until they're feeling hungry or tired to start eating, but actually, that is way too late. If you remember those carb stores, which are called glycogen, and how they get used up as you run, if you're getting to the point where you're running low on those, then it's already too late. There's a lag time between eating something and then being able to use it for energy, so you want to try to stay ahead of that curve and never get to that point. So if you want your long runs to be productive, then you want to have a fueling plan and start early. My usual recommendation during long training runs, when they're at a genuinely easy intensity, is 30 grams of carbohydrates per hour if you're running up to about 4 hours. This should be enough to help keep your carb stores up and make it a productive session. However, you'd benefit from more like 50 to 80 grams of carbohydrates per hour for anything over 4 hours, or for longer runs that also include high intensity blocks. So let's say a 4 hour run with some 30 minute slightly harder efforts baked in it. Now in terms of how you get to that number, I've put the carbohydrate content of common foods that people eat when running. So you can see how you might get to this amount. Just like what you eat before your long run, you can choose whatever suits you here. And as long as you get to those required carbohydrate amounts and it doesn't cause any sort of stomach upset, then that's absolutely fine. You can combine these foods or just stick to one source. And it's also fine to just use gels or carb drinks to hit these amounts. And if you regularly suffer with stomach upset, then this might be the best option for you because they are way easier for your stomach to digest. If you're running for longer than six hours though, then it's worth considering consuming something with protein in over your run. When you do these longer runs, you start to get some muscle breakdown, in part simply due to the duration, but also because your body has its normal physiological functions to carry out and some of these require protein for fuel. The normal source of this protein is from food, but if you don't have any access to dietary protein, then your body will start breaking down muscle tissue and use the protein from that. So during your training runs, anything over about six, maybe eight hours, try for around five to 10 grams of protein per hour. Sports bars are often a great way to do this, or if you're opting for some solid food like wraps or sandwiches, this might already be enough to get you there. Now it's worth addressing a big barrier to fueling your long runs properly. And that's this whole topic of, do you really need to consume this many carbs? And the follow on question of, is it actually better to reduce the carbs that you consume so that you can instead focus on metabolizing or burning fat? The short answer is that yes, you should consume this many carbs and no, it isn't better to reduce the carbs to focus on metabolizing fat. It's obviously though a bit more nuanced than that. So let's dig into it and let's get a biggie out of the way. You can improve your fat metabolism while still consuming carbohydrates. I've spoken with plenty of runners who start going longer with distance and get hooked on the idea of improving their fat burning potential. And in theory, this is great because it would mean that you would have more access to that near unlimited store of fat and make you less reliant on carbohydrates. So people reduce their carbs or start going for progressively longer runs without any food. And I'll frequently get comments on this channel from people saying they worked their way up to a two or three hour long run fasted. But the thing is that you really don't need to. You can still burn fat for fuel, even when consuming carbohydrates during running. And there's no good data to show that there's a better training response if you restrict them. In fact, there's quite the opposite. Remember at the start when I mentioned that you'll still use carbs for energy even when you're doing slow, easy training. And remember that that store is limited. 
And the, as these stores get lower, you'll get to the point where you bonk or hit the wall. And clearly, you don't want this to happen as you want your runs to be productive and beneficial. Well, consuming carbs is the way to do that, so it should take priority over restricting them from your diet or during your running. And I'll let you into a secret. The best way to improve your fat metabolism is to train consistently over time. And we're talking years and years. Honestly, if you want to become a good fat burner, then run for years. This is way more influential than anything else I can tell you in terms of nutrition tips or hacks. And in order to do that and run consistently over years, you need to fuel your runs well so that you can recover well, feel great, and can week on week hit your high mileage aims. So back to the question of do you need to consume as many as 30 to 80 grams of carbs per hour? Yes, definitely because that's the sort of region that will help keep your glycogen stores up during your training runs. I've seen calculations provided in other videos which look at energy use during long runs, and they get things quite wrong. I'm not specifically knocking those videos, and I'm not going to name any, but it's really important to understand it's more complex than these suggest. What you might see is people saying that you have 2,000 calories worth of carbs stored as glycogen to use for energy. Now, that is true, but that's only if you carb load, which is following a strict protocol of eating 8 to 10 grams of carbohydrates per day for at least 24 hours. Most people aren't going to be doing this for an average training run, so they might have more like 1600 calories of glycogen stored when you account for previous training and just normal daily life. So that first number is wrong from the very get-go. But the other thing here is, let's say for argument's sake, you have those 2000 calories worth of glycogen stored. It's not as simple as saying that's then available for energy during your run. Your body is not going to use all of that for energy during running because it starts to notice when those stores are running low. And it puts the brakes on because it knows that if it drops too low, then that's dangerous because this is essentially hypoglycemia, so low blood sugar levels, which at its worst can cause comas and death. Now, this is obviously very individual, but let's say that your body is actually going to save around 500 calories worth of glycogen as protection. Your actual working amount on that training run might be more like 1,100 calories worth stored as carbohydrates, rather than 2,000 that's been suggested. So this would, in combination with fat burning, only sustain you for a couple of hours of running at an easy pace. It's hard to give an exact amount of carbohydrates that you might burn per hour because everyone will be different and it depends on your ability to metabolize fat and carbs for energy. If you're interested in that, then you can consider doing metabolic testing at a local university or sports facility, and that will give you way more nuanced information. But let's say you go out for an easy training run and use something like a 50-50 split of carbs to fat. And this isn't unrealistic, by the way, and some people might be worse than that. You're going to be burning roughly 600 calories per hour, which means 300 calories are coming from carbohydrates. There's 4 calories per gram of carbohydrate, meaning that you're going to use around 75 grams of carbohydrates per hour. Over 4 hours, that's 300 grams of glycogen, which is 1,200 calories. These are all rough figures, but hopefully now you can see why those calculations are actually way more significant, because people are dramatically underestimating their carbohydrate stores and their carbohydrate needs during running. But what I would really love you to get from this video is that fueling your long runs is important and beneficial. If you want to get better, then you need to train consistently over time and fueling your body properly is going to be the key to doing this. If you've been finding this video useful up until this point, then please do give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe for more helpful running videos on nutrition like this. So let's move on to hydration during your long runs. And we'll put a figure of anything over four hours here. I say that because generally speaking, anything under four hours, your body is pretty good at dealing with. And the need for specific fluid plans is less important. It may still be necessary depending on factors such as your sweat rate and the climate, but less so. Usually anything like a minimum of 300 milliliters of water per hour is fine. But let's say you're going to run for longer than four hours. Fluid and electrolyte intake starts to become way more important. 
I'd love to run you through the basic physiology of blood and sweat because it gives context for hydration, why it's so important, and including that mineral you might have heard about called sodium. A large component of your blood is made up of water, which is why you get the advice to drink when you exercise. When you sweat, you lose water from your blood, which reduces your blood volume. And you also lose sodium through sweat, as well as through urine. The result of having this lower blood volume means that your heart has to work harder, with the main change being it beats faster. You might have noticed that you have a higher heart rate when you're dehydrated, and this is one of the reasons. Then, because your blood volume is lower, you have less blood being sent to your gastrointestinal symptom, because instead it's being sent to your vital organs to keep them safe and functioning properly. This means you can't absorb as much nutrition as possible and also means that your capacity for cooling is reduced, resulting in a higher core temperature and reduced sweat rate. All of this as a combination is the physiological basis for why dehydration affects performance. Now I mentioned sodium, and realistically when it comes to exercise, it's the most important mineral or electrolyte, and that's because of its link to water and your circulatory system. Other electrolytes like magnesium, potassium, calcium, they're all important for your health, but there's no good evidence to support replacement during exercise. As a result, I don't really suggest that those are ones that you need to focus on, but you do need to focus on sodium. So when it comes to hydration during your long runs, anywhere between about 400 to 750 milliliters of fluid per hour is great. And this is individual and it just depends on what's comfortable for you and what you can tolerate. Now more is usually better, so finding out your max in training is helpful. Along with that amount of fluid, you should be consuming at least 250 milligrams of sodium per 500 milliliters of fluid, or 500 milligrams of sodium per liter of fluid. Now some of you might notice that when I talk about sodium, it's a bit different to carbohydrates, in that carbs are grams of carbs per hour whereas sodium is per litre of fluid. That's because sodium intake is independent of time and should instead scale with the amount of fluid that you drink. And the reason behind this is that it's the amount of sodium in your blood which is important. And just drinking plain water can dilute that amount of sodium. And that can cause something called hyponutremia, which can be dangerous, especially during long running. So this means that if you drink more fluid, then you should still be consuming sodium at that same concentration. And there are two ways that you can do this. The first is using a pre-made hydration drink, as these typically already contain at least 250 milligrams of sodium per serving, and are usually meant to be mixed with 500 milliliters of water. If not, then you can add sodium to the fluid itself. You can use sports-specific electrolyte tablets or table salt to get to the required amounts. Table salt contains 40% sodium and 60% chloride, which means that if you use one gram of table salt, it will contain 400 milligrams of sodium. So if you see salt on a nutritional label, you just take 40% of that to find out the sodium content. The second option is that you can use sodium capsules during your run. So let's say you were using a carbohydrate drink mix and it didn't contain much sodium and you didn't want to add any to the drink itself. You can take sodium tablets with you and just use them based on how much fluid you're consuming. So you could just take them as frequently as you need to during your long run to make sure you keep up with that 250 milligrams of sodium per 500 milliliters of water threshold. None of these options aren't necessarily better. It's just about finding out what works for you. Now, there's obviously a lot to take on board there, but if you get it right, then it makes an absolute world of difference. One of the next things that you should learn about to improve your running is carbohydrate loading. And in this video here, I show you how to carb load properly to improve your performance during your next ultra event. 